More than three decades ago, there was no scientific evidence to prove the existence of a habitable planet outside our solar system. To be precise, the discovery of the first exoplanet was made official on January 9, 1992. But thanks to great technological advances in a short space of time, if we take into account all the years of humanity's life on Earth. Currently, at the time of this video, NASA has confirmed the discovery of 5,587 exoplanets, 10,146 candidates that still need to be analyzed, and 4,288 planetary systems. Among all these discoveries, we have perhaps the information that can make you the most excited or at least the most pensive, although we have already discovered more than 5,500 exoplanets, only 198 of them are rocky planets with an iron-rich core, such as Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. The vast majority of exoplanets discovered are gas giants or planets similar to Neptune and Uranus, meaning that the vast majority of exoplanets discovered do not have the conditions for life, at least not life as we know it. As the search for habitable planets continues, we are beginning to discover entire planetary systems with even more than one potentially habitable planet. And even with all the vastness of the universe, by luck or skill of the researchers, we have already found such a system in our neighborhood, within our Milky Way. The Milky Way has several planetary systems centered around stars very similar to our Sun. However, the planets that orbit near these large stars end up getting too hot and thus become unsuitable for sustaining life. But if we find systems with smaller, cooler stars, the habitable zone will become much closer. As we discovered earlier, several systems and planets with the potential to be as habitable as Earth have already been discovered. And today we're going to focus on learning about the Gliese 667 star system and the Gliese 667 cc planet. 23 light years away from Earth, in the direction of the constellation of Scorpio, we have the Gliese 667 triple star system, known for being a system where a low-mass star has several rocky planets orbiting within its habitable zone. The first star in the system is GJ667A, a K-type star, K-stars are the best places to look for life, and the largest in the system. This red-orange dwarf star has 73% of the sun's mass and shines only 12% brighter than our sun. At an average distance of 12 astronomical units, we find its companion GJ667b, another red-orange dwarf, albeit slightly smaller, with about 69% of the sun's mass and shining with only 5% of our sun's power. And lastly, and most interestingly, we have GJ667c, a red dwarf with 33% the mass of our sun. As you might expect, this is a much weaker and colder star than its sisters. This makes it much more interesting when we talk about the search for habitable life on other planets. Initially, scientists believed there were only three exoplanets orbiting Gliese 667c. However, after revisions to existing data and additional observations, they discovered that there could be up to six planets in the planetary system, with three or even four of them potentially being habitable. Termed super-Earths, a term used to describe planets larger than Earth but not as large as our gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, these planets may be composed of rocks or a mix of rocks and ice, and they may have atmospheres capable of supporting various forms of life. The planet closest to the star, Gliese 667 cb, is an extremely hot planet with temperatures of up to 200 degrees Celsius. It is the largest planet in the system, being 5.5 times the size of Earth. This exoplanet likely has a dense atmosphere and takes only seven days to complete one orbit around its star. The three potentially habitable planets in the Gliese 667 system are located in orbits farther from their host star and have masses between one and five times that of Earth, making them great candidates for habitation. Gliese 667 cc, the next planet closest to the star, orbits at the inner edge of its habitable zone. It has a mass approximately 3.8 times that of Earth and a radius about 1.8 times larger than our planet. A year on this planet lasts only 28 days. Due to the low energy emission, the habitable zone around the red dwarf GJ667C is located very close to the star, ranging between 0.11 and 0.23 astronomical units. 
In comparison, Earth is located about one astronomical unit from the Sun. Our planet would be an ice world if it were orbiting star C at this distance. GJ 667 CC orbits its parent star eight times closer, at approximately 0.12 astronomical units, completing an orbit around the red dwarf every 28 days. Due to this proximity, the exoplanet is likely tidally locked with its star, with one side permanently illuminated and the other permanently in darkness. The temperature differences between the two sides likely have a significant impact on the exoplanet's global climate. Gliese 667 cc receives about 10% less light than Earth from the Sun. However, since most of this light is infrared, the planet receives approximately the same amount of energy that Earth receives from the Sun, which would help maintain water on its surface and result in a climate similar to Earth's. Due to uncertainty about the presence and composition of its atmosphere, it is impossible to predict the exact surface temperature on Gliese 667 cc. If the planet has an atmosphere similar to Earth's, it would distribute heat and balance temperatures across the planet, resulting in a pleasant temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius on the night side. Living on a planet like this would be a completely different experience. Gliese 667 cc receives a faint reddish light from its star. The other two stars, Gliese 667 a and b, are located about 230 astronomical units away, much beyond the distance between Pluto and the Sun, and outside the planetary system. However, the two other stars would still appear as a pair of bright stars visible during the day and shine as intensely as the full moon at night. And our Sun would seem like a distant star. But, we would still face various challenges. Unfortunately, the nearby red dwarf is known to emit solar flares and intense radiation bursts, up to a thousand times stronger than solar flares in our sun. This could be problematic for any potential life on the surface of Gliese 667 cc. The problems don't stop there, the strong magnetism of the red dwarf can cause sunspots that can reduce stars' emitted energy by 40% for months, which, combined with the lack of ultraviolet light emissions, would be another problem for life formation as we know it. Residing on Gliese 667 cc would be very different from what we are used to, also due to its mass. This rocky world would have a gravitational acceleration up to 60% greater than what we experience on Earth. A person weighing 75 kilograms on Earth would weigh up to 120 kilograms on Gliese 667 cc. Additionally, a planet with greater mass can retain a denser atmosphere, resulting in higher atmospheric pressure on its surface. If it has an atmosphere similar to Earth's, the atmospheric pressure would be only a few times higher. However, if the exoplanet has an atmosphere similar to Venus's, the atmospheric pressure could be several hundred times higher, equivalent to the pressure of water several kilometers deep in Earth's oceans. Despite being in the habitable zone, Gliese 667 cc may not present the same conditions as Earth. Life forms may have to adapt to the dim and variable light, to a possible high atmospheric pressure, and to frequent solar flares. However, this does not mean that life cannot form on such a world. We have seen examples of surprising adaptability of life on Earth. The other two potentially habitable planets are nearly identical. Gliese 667 Su and CF are located farther from their parent star, meaning they receive less energy. This could make them too cold to sustain life as we know it. However, unlike Gliese 667 cc, a denser atmosphere would be beneficial for potential life on these planets, as it would help retain heat and maintain favorable temperature conditions. Identifying three worlds within the habitable zone of the same planetary system is extremely rare, but four is practically unimaginable. According to a study, five planets in the Gliese 667 c system are estimated to receive solar radiation ranging from 20 to 200 percent of Earth's current exposure to the Sun, making them all potential candidates for habitability. However, there are many other factors at play. After various studies and analyses, scientists have determined that for a planet with mass equal to that of Earth, the habitable zone around Gliese 667 c has two boundaries. 
The inner limit is between 0.095 and 0.126 astronomical units from the star, while the outer limit is between 0.241 and 0.251 astronomical units. Any planet orbiting within these distances from star C may be capable of sustaining life, as it would have the proper conditions for the existence of liquid water on its surface. In 2013, astronomers announced that Gliese 667c has at least six planets, namely, Gliese CB, CC, CF, CE, CD, and finally, CG. And there is the possibility of a seventh planet, designated as CH. Although highly controversial, the exoplanet could be the smallest found so far around star C, with a mass of at least 1.1 times that of Earth, located between planet C and B due to its mass and proximity to the parent star, planet H would be too hot for any form of life. However, planets F and E are confirmed to orbit within the habitable zone. That means Gliese 667 CC, CF, SU, and possibly even CD are all potentially habitable worlds. The discovery of densely populated planetary systems around M dwarf stars, like Gliese 667c, suggests the existence of numerous populations of planetary systems out there, each with multiple potentially habitable planets. And since M dwarfs represent more than 70% of all stars in our cosmic neighborhood, the number of promising planetary systems in our galaxy is likely much larger than previously thought. Instead of searching for a single potentially habitable planet among 10 stars, scientists can now focus on a single star to find multiple candidates for Earth 2.0. With the accelerated development of new and better technologies, our ability to unravel the mysteries of the universe is growing every day. Imagine, in 5, 10, or 15 years from now, how many new discoveries and questions we have today will have been answered. I don't know about you, but I'm already excited to follow all this evolution. Now I want to hear your opinion. Do you believe that one day we will be able to find the perfect planet? The long-awaited Earth 2.0? Comment below, let's discuss this. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Every week we'll bring you new videos on fun and curious topics like this one.